It's a disaster. Obesity has basically taken over the lives of our children. Uh, at this point in time, we are at 20% obesity, and if, then if you add the overweight kids, we're at 33% overweight. You know, in 1970, one out of 20 kids were obese. Now, it's basically one out of four. So, you know, this is a problem that has quadrupled over the past uh, 30, 40 years. Well, the problem with adolescents is that they have money in their pocket. And the other problem is that there is a convenience store within 500 feet of every school in America. And the reason is because that, that adolescent is a target. He's got a target painted on his back. And so, you know, parents tell us all the time that they can't control what their kid eats. You know, the kid has a little bit of money in their pocket from babysitting or whatever. And they spend it at the convenience store on chips, soda, or you know, otherwise. Um, you know, we did a study at uh, UCSF. My colleague Chris Manson was the first author, and what she looked at was kids who walk to school are they thinner than kids who are driven to school? It turned out they were heavier, and the reason was because those kids were stopping at the fast food restaurant or the convenience store on the way home. Medications have been used in pediatric obesity, but sparingly, and that's good. We don't want to have everybody awash in pharmacotherapy. I use them when appropriate. The problem is that they really only provide salutary, you know, minimal uh, efficacy. Uh, one thing they do is they tend to prevent more weight gain, but it's really hard to induce weight loss. The fact is that this problem is only getting worse and it's only occurring earlier and earlier. And this means that a public health response is absolutely required. It depends on where the patient is. Every patient is different. Uh, the thing that I have learned from doing this for a long time is that no patient is like any other patient. They all have different physiologic reasons for their weight gain. They all have different phenomena driving food intake or lack of exercise. They all have different social uh, uh, considerations, different parents that can or cannot uh, participate in their therapy. There's no one global prescription. This is very piecemeal. This is very, you know, each patient has to be taken as its own case. At our clinic, everyone has to pass or fail a six-month lifestyle intervention. And that lifestyle intervention is very easy. Get rid of every sugar beverage in the house, eat your carbohydrate with fiber, wait 20 minutes for second portions, buy your screen time with activity. Now, at the end of six months, some of those kids will have done well and some won't. And then the question is, the kids who did not do well, why did they not do well? We look at their biochemistry, we look at the lab tests. And those lab tests almost always tell us whether or not pharmacotherapy should be considered as an adjunct for those patients. We will then try that pharmacotherapy and see whether or not we can make headway. If so, fantastic. If not, and the patient is compliant with everything else, we very well may consider a bariatric procedure and we have done several. Most of the ones that we have done at UCSF have been lap bands, but we are now starting to talk about sleeve gastrectomies as well. Yes, I've been to Duke and I have heard of Wellspring and many of my patients have actually uh, spent time at Wellspring in the past. Now, of course, things are going to change and we'll have to see how things do change as to whether or not there will be the same model, whether the uh, results will be similar or better, we'll have to see. The concept of a camp for obese children sounds like a very good idea. There's a lot of reasons for doing that, uh, inclu including economies of scale, uh, giving the kids a social outlet where they're not going to be outcast, uh, providing an appropriate environment for them in order to be able to try to make changes that 
uh, are beneficial. All of those things are very good and I am certainly for them. The biggest problem with any camp concept is that once the camp is over, the patient is delivered right back to the same toxic environment that they came from. And virtually all of the data thus far shows that things just get worse again. So in order to be able to mitigate that negative long-term outcome, we have to change the kid's home environment. And there's only one way to do that, and that's change the parents too. I would say that the parents are the ones who need to go to camp.